Welcome to this second episode of the APL Quest. Check out APL Wiki for details. Today's quest is called Making the Grade. It's the second problem from the 2013 uh, APL Problem Solving Competitions Phase 1. Here we are to write a function which takes a list of numbers representing the uh, points that people scored on some type of test. If they scored 65 or higher, then they have passed in the test. And we are to compute the percentage of people who passed. Let's start off by generating some test data. So here are 10 scores between 1 and 100. And those that uh, succeeded in the test had scores 69 and 72. So we know how many uh, scores there are in total. And we can compare all these scores with 65. So if the, uh, the test scores are greater than or equal to 65, then they have succeeded. And this gives us a Boolean vector indicating with ones and zeros uh, the ones that have succeeded. Then we can sum the Boolean vector to find out how many have succeeded. And then we can divide that by the total number. So this gives us a fraction and we can multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. Putting all this together uh, we have the function f and, and we take 100 multiplied by the sum of the scores that are larger than 65 divided by the total tally of scores. That's the argument here, not the, the variable t. And we can try this on t, and that gives us the correct thing. Now, there's something here that's worth noting. Um, we are doing a bunch of different operations on our data, and while mathematically equivalent, it is important which order we do this in, in order to have the maximal performance. So here are some variations of things that we could do. Um, in F, we started off by the comparison, and then we summed. However, we could also uh, start off a bit differently. So, let's say that we start off by doing the comparison, and then we divide by the total count. Then we sum, and then we multiply by the 100. So this is mathematically equivalent we'll see in a moment that it makes a big difference. What we could also do is we could start off in the same way by computing uh, the numbers greater than or equal to 65. We could divide by the total number of numbers. Then we could multiply by 100 and then sum. Again, mathematically equivalent. But this makes a difference in performance. Let's generate a bunch of test data. So. Um, here's some test data. We're going to do random numbers between 1 and 100, but this time we're going to do a million of them. I'm not going to print these out. Let's uh, get in the compare execution time utility from the defense workspace. And then we're going to run F on these test scores and G on the test scores and H on the test scores. And we'll see in a moment. that there is a quite significant difference in the performance here. So what is it that's actually going on? In F, we are doing, if we call the number of, uh, of scores n, we're doing n comparisons first. And then we are doing n minus 1 additions. We're doing 1 division and one multiplication. So we can write this. We're doing uh, n comparisons right like this. And then we are doing uh, n minus 1 summations. And then we're doing one division and one 
multiplication. In G, we again start off the same way. We're doing uh, n comparisons, and then, but then we're dividing every comparison with uh, the tally. So that means we're doing n divisions, and we're doing the summation after that. So that's n minus one summations. And finally, we're doing one multiplication. And in H here, we are doing starting off the same way with an n comparisons. Then we are doing the n divisions. And then we are doing n multiplications as well. And finally, we're doing n minus 1 ad additions. So while these are mathematically equivalent, we can see that there's going to be a di big difference in the performance. And indeed, in F is the one where we're doing the least amount of work. So looking at uh, F again, we can come up with some variations. And in the live chat event, and it happened last Friday, um, there were a bunch of variations and they were all over this same theme and trying out various ways of expressing this. So here we're doing dealing with a scalar, the cutoff point, 65, and a vector, these are all the scores. And we should notice this pattern. We have a sum over a comparison of vectors. So it's two scalar functions, a reduction over a vectorized operation, and when we have that and we're doing APL, we should think inner product. So we can take these and combine them like that. And we can call this I. So this is going to be uh, the same, we give the same result as before. The test result here. Now, why am I doing this? This is because this allows us to move on to a tested solution that's really, really neat. Notice that uh, a, a tested solution expresses everything in terms of function application on the argument rather than exp uh, explicitly stating the name of the argument. So the argument here is omega, and the function that's being applied to omega is the tally. Here, the function that's being applied to omega is the inner product with 65 as a bound constant right argument to the inner product. And that we can express as a tacit function really neatly. So we get rid of our braces. The application of tally on the argument becomes just tally. The application of the inner product with a bound right argument, we use the bind operator to bind that right argument to the inner product. And that allows us to get rid of all the noise. Right there. It's going to have about the same performance, but for those that like test programming, this is very nice. But we can also spot a thing here. We bound the argument, which is the cutoff point. What if we want to generalize our, our function such that we can take the cutoff point as an additional argument? In APL, it's common to have the main data as the right argument and various parameters as a left argument, if any. So we would really want to move the 65, or whichever number we use as the cutoff, over to the left side. Of course, uh, we can easily do this by flipping the direction of the comparison. Then the 65 can go on the left, so to say, but it's a tacit function. The problem is that we want the tally of only the right argument. If we left it the way it is now, it would be uh, the mismatch, whether or not they're different. And of course, they are different, and we'll be dividing by zero, which is not what we want. So what we can do is that we add a little construct here and a top right. So this applies tally monadically on the result of choosing the right argument. Another way uh, that we could 
generalize this is by saying the default cutoff point is 65. So we can go up and say instead of using 65 as a constant in here, we supply it as a left argument. But if no left argument is given, then we use 65. So now we can say that the cutoff point is 65. We get the same result. If instead we make the cutoff point 50, oops, I made a mistake here. Oh, yeah, of course, not t, 50, and apply the function l. Um, then it's 40% of the scores that are um, that pass. And we have here 69, 60, 63, and 72. Finally, uh, I'd like to show some, some interesting different approaches to this problem, since everything we did now was using the same basic method. Basic method. Uh, these are not efficient, but nevertheless, they are kind of eye-opening in completely different ways you can attack the problem. The first one uh, makes an assumption that all our scores are integers between 0 and 100. So we can generate our scores uh, that would not pass um, and then we could remove all those scores that wouldn't pass leaving only those that do pass and now between this set difference um, the, the ratio in the, of the length of the set difference and the original is then the ratio of winners so we can take the winners and the original and do a ratio of lengths. So this is the over operator. We're applying tally on both arguments and then we are dividing them. And that gives us um, our ratio and we can multiply by 100. So we can put this into a function. Here's our argument. Um, and a different uh, approach to this is in using uh, the interval index function. So if we have our test scores here, then we can put some interval cutoffs. So let's say we put a cutoff of 20 and a cutoff of 65. And this gives us the indices of the intervals that these numbers fall in. So 4 is below 20, so that's index 0, it's before the first one. And 69 is, uh, is after 65, so this is 1 in the middle, and then to the right of the last one is number 2. Uh, and 22 is right there in between. However, we only want one cutoff. So we can make a vector that has but one element. And this gives us, uh, there's still indices, but they also happen to be Boolean, because either something falls before the first cutoff or in the interval that's formed to the right of that cutoff inclusive. So now uh, we could sum this up and divide by uh, the total number of, uh, of scores. But let's do it a little bit differently. Instead, we can use iota underbar again, but this time monadically, and that's where this computes the indices of those that uh, fulfill the requirement of being above 65. And now we can use the same method as we did above, where we take this result and divide with uh, over the tallies of the original. And then we add the last thing. So this is using uh, where and the interval uh, index. So we can say it's 100 times this. And of course, um, for both S and T, we could uh, modify them to take an optional or required left argument. So here are all the uh, definitions that we did uh, today compare them, don't forget to 
uh, check out what the performance looks like on the kind of data that you're running with. Thank you so much for watching.